welcome back to the Atlas Strength Shop. I am Cameron and it is warm in here today. It is now March 1st when I am filming this. Winter is officially over here in the state of Louisiana. It is in the mid 80s and I got the fans turned off in the gym so that we can get a decent recording. If you've been paying attention to the channel, you've noticed I've been putting out videos for the upcoming competition here in our state, the Swamp Monsters Shootout. I've got a video for the Axle Clean and Press, the Husafel Carry, got a video for the Jefferson deadlift and today is going to be the yoke carry. The rules for the upcoming competition is 50 feet for a straight shot. You can drop it as many times as you need to. You can't push it, you can't pull it, you can't drag it. You have one minute to get as far as you can. Hopefully you make it that 50 feet. I know I intend to. So let's go ahead and we'll walk over to the yoke and we will break down the movement. I'm not going to do much moving today. Instead, what I'm going to do, just like the last video, since it worked so well, is tomorrow when we all are around training yoke, I'm gonna do a lot of filming and I'm going to point out some of the different techniques. Some of those will probably work for you. Let's see how it goes. This is a yoke. Of course, you probably already knew that. Otherwise, why in the hell would you be typing how to do a yoke walk into the YouTube search bar? Anyway. There's not really that much to this if you already know how to brace. You're going to want to get your back tight. You're going to want to pack your lats down. You're going to do that by bringing your shoulder blades together and driving your shoulders down towards your hips. That's going to turn everything on. You're also going to want to take in a big belly breath and you're going to want to cinch everything down while having your lats engaged. That's going to make your trunk as solid as humanly possible. And that's what's going to support the most weight. Ideally, when you do this, wear a belt. You're gonna have a much better brace that way. This is empty, so I'm not going to grab my belt to show you all how to pick up an empty ass yoke. So there's a few different schools of thought when it comes to hand placement. What I see a lot of smaller frame people do is when they get under it, they'll get their hands right here, they'll get everything tight, they'll get their they'll get their belly breath, and then they'll pick up and they'll walk just like that. I personally don't like that way. I don't find it works well for me. So what I do, is I put my hands out to the side right here, get everything tight. Notice it's in kind of a high bar position. If you put it too low on your back, it's just gonna slide off when you start to move forward. So I get my back tight, get my belly breath, and I'm pushing out against the uprights. That helps keep the uprights from shaking around as you walk. Another thing you can do is you take that same position, except instead of pressing out, what you're going to do, Again, get your back tight, get your belly breath, is you're gonna pull in. I personally don't like that as much, but we have something to do. For this yoke in particular, it tends to favor people with shorter arms because you can get a little bit higher up on the uprights and it just makes your back a little bit tighter. Also, wrap this in some athletic tape. It's going to gonna help it not slide off your back quite as easily. You're also not going to want to do this in one of those synthetic fiber shirts like you get from Under Armour. You're gonna to want to do this in something that is cotton because that'll be a little bit grippier. Have somebody chalk your back for you when you do this. As far as moving goes, one foot under the other, one foot in front of the other, you're going to take short choppy steps. Try to move your feet quickly. As the weight gets heavy, You'll notice that your knees don't really want to bend. Again, your legs will turn into more like columns underneath you. So you start to move a little bit more like that. Anyway, that is the basics on how to pick this thing up. Oh, one more thing. You're going to want to set the upright at the right position. Now what I mean by the right position is if you put it too high, when you go to pick this, you're going to bottom out. If you pick it too low, you're practically squatting the whole thing up and you're gonna, you're gonna waste precious energy. You don't wanna use energy on this because it will break you down. 
as far as programming goes. Don't try to max out on this every week. It will put your nervous system into a severe deficit. You'll basically feel like you had the flu for a few days. And especially if you also are doing really heavy deadlifts that week, it's just a bad idea. So I usually, I try, to, I try to touch this thing every other week and I'll alternate between going heavy for short distances and going somewhat lighter and working on speed. I, I feel like that's the best way. There are a lot of people on YouTube that also feel the same way. So until that stops working for me, that's what I'm gonna go with. Anyway, now we are going to cut to tomorrow, which I guess when you're watching this, it's in the past, so it's not tomorrow, but for me it's tomorrow right now. A lot of us are gonna be using this, so I'm going to film them and I'm gonna go over some of the different things that they do. We have people who use all different types of hand placements. Uh, we have people that move their feet slightly different. Uh, we, we, have some, we have some strong people at this gym, so watch one of them, try out what they do, and if you like it, keep it. If you don't, throw it out, do something else. Okay. So we started filming once we had a little bit of weight on there. This is Michael Sullivan. This is time. his first time ever touching any strongman implements. So what I want you to notice is the belt. That is not the right belt for this. You're going to want something with the same width all fail. the way around your waist. Yeah. That'll help you get a lot more down. pressure into your abdominal cavity. And here's my first run of the day. Notice I am pressing out and forward against those uprights. That's going to help me get some momentum going. All right, let's see. Now we have Justin. Justin's a strong dude. This is his first run of the day as well. He tends to pull in on the uprights. That works really well for him. Notice his upper back. Now it's tight, tight, tight. So today we were just going 50 feet. We we're all trying to get something heavy on our back. All right, so now we have Lauren. She she puts her hands on the cross member. Notice her upper back is really tight. And she's actually pulling that cross member through her body. And I believe she is going to be next up as well. And this is close to 600, if I'm not mistaken. I think we're at like the 540 range, somewhere thereabout. She's going to nationals this year. Y'all go follow her. And this was one of my last runs for the day. This is actually a PR for me. Didn't go as well as I would have liked for it to have gone, but this was the first time I ever had 600 on my back and I'm still breathing. So we do have that. Okay, let's play attention to what Jason does. Notice he has a staggered stance, so he's actually gonna take his first step as he lifts the yoke up. So it swings back, and then when it swings back forward, he pushes on it as hard as he can. Good stuff. This helps get him a lot of forward Good momentum, stuff. and he's basically blending that line between chaos and order to go as fast as possible. So yeah, that's the video. I hope you learned something. If you want to check out the other ones, they will be linked somewhere around here in a various order. So, if you like the video, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to click that like button down below the video. And I would also really, really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. I really want to put out more content. And the way I'm going to be able to put more, more content is if I have more followers. If I have more followers, I'll have more people telling me what they want to see, what I can improve on. You get the idea. So, until next time, y'all have fun. And if you excuse me, I'm about to go have some Mexican food with my disproportionately hot girlfriend. So yeah, y'all have a good night.